why has nobody removed the handcuffs, by the way? <laughs> they were like, all right, sir, let's just get these off you. He's like, no, I like them. Please keep them on. It's like, okay then, somebody's kinky. Hello, everyone. This is Boricua Binks, and welcome back to Let's Play Ace Attorney Investigations, Miles Edgeworth. We're continuing on in the third case, The Kidnapped Turnabout. Miss Pops's Confession. The one who came up with the kidnapping plan was the butler, Mr. Deacon. We knew that we could get rich by holding Lance hostage. I'm shocked. I thought you loved him. What happened, girl? Mr. Amano would pay anything to get his son back, after all. Everything was going according to plan. But as soon as we got the money, Mr. Deacon turned on me and tried to kill me. Oh. There. Are you satisfied? She just confessed to her... Oh, excuse me. <laughs> oh. Gosh, I can't record today without something going wrong. Dang, damn it. There, are you satisfied? She just confessed her crimes a second time. At least you have the guts to admit what you've done. I can at least respect that much. Miss Pops, is what you said really the truth? Y yes, it is. Hmm, that's a little hesitation there, girl. If that is the truth, it certainly isn't the whole truth. Because there is something that seems a bit too improbable in her confession. Alright. Let's see. Mr. Deacon. Which hostage. Okay, send back. As soon as we got the money, Mr. Deacon turned on me and tried to kill me. Let's press. Hold it. Why do you think he did? I have no idea. But maybe he had planned on doing so from the very beginning. Miss Pops. <laughs> Wait, Mr. Deacon planned to kill Miss Pops from the very beginning. Was that ever really likely to happen? What should I do? Should I raise an objection? Let's do it. I'm sorry, but I don't think what you just claimed is all that likely. Huh? I don't think Mr. Deacon would have ever been capable of killing you. But why? We were total strangers! It's not uncommon for people to kill each other over money! Miss Pops, you really are clueless, aren't you? But what do you mean? You never knew what your role in the kidnapping was, nor do you know who you really are. Am I like a Disney princess? No. But I do, and I can show you with this piece of evidence. This proves that Mr. Deacon wouldn't have been able to bring himself to kill Miss Pops. Ah, uh, I'm gonna say... I mean... The fact that their pendants are... alike... says a lot, you know? The fact that, uh, look at his dossier. He has a daughter, but I'm not sure which one I need to present. That's the only problem. Like, see, <sighs> clearly the pendants are connected. <sighs> I feel like we have to use her pendant? Because he talked about who she is. Take that! Yeah. Why are you showing this to me? So what about the pendant? This pair of wings, along with this piece of evidence, shows who you really are. This one? Take that! These two pendants resemble each other, wouldn't you agree? Hey, you're right! They're the same color, and they're even made of the same material! 
I believe that these two pendants are actually one. Ah? She acted like she got hit. <laughs> oh, I was about to make a bad joke. I'm not gonna do it though. It was really bad. Shall we give it a try? Wow, it's it's totally Pegasus. But, but why? Why does my pendant match up with Mr. Deacon's? You're a smart lady, I think. I'm sure you can imagine why that might be. No, I really don't know. Not even a clue? No, no idea. <sighs> Try to explain everything. What? No, that can't be! Hey, you actually figured it out. So the two make a set. <laughs> it's just another trinket. It's not as though this changes anything. <laughs> you lack imagination, Agent Lang. Very well, I'll show you with this evidence. This is the piece of evidence that gives meaning to the Pegasus Pendant. Okay, what I said, which is the dossier? Yeah. Take that! Oliver Deakin was just an alias for this man. His real name was Colin Devore. The name that is etched on the horse pendant. What? An alias? I suppose he had to hide the fact that he was a felon somehow in order to live. And it makes sense given what is written in Mr. Devore's dossier. But what I really wanted to point out was this. The specific section is what reveals the true meaning behind those pendants. How many times do I gotta present something, huh? Mr. Devore had one daughter, and her name is Lauren Hawks. That's a lie! That person was got my father! He couldn't come out and tell you he was your father because he was in hiding. Although, honestly, he still could have told her. You know what I mean? Like, what, did he think she would go running to the cops and tell on him or something? Could have at least done the cur common courtesy, hey girl, I'm your daddy. However, I believe he was trying to secretly watch over you. Do you still believe that a man like that could kill the daughter he was separated from? Or even that such a man would allow his daughter to get involved in a kidnapping plot? <laughs> and what is so funny, Agent Lang? I'm not a comedian. You're good at making things up in your head and deciding it's the truth, aren't you? What are you trying to say? Your thinking is much too innocent. After all, I've thought of another possibility. Is that so? Well, let's hear it. Alright. Let's face off again. I'll grant you that the two of them are father and daughter. But isn't it possible that they both knew that fact? It was no coincidence that the reunited pair became involved in the house of Amano. And the two of them made good use of their meetings to plan this little kidnapping. Wouldn't you say my scenario is perfectly probable as well? So this is his version of how things might have been. You don't have any proof that either one didn't know of their true relationship, right? That girl over there is totally crying crocodile tears. You mean they knowingly committed the kidnapping as father and daughter? That's right. As one really rotten family. Is that really what happened? I'd better take a long, hard look at the evidence. Mm. Okay, uh... Alright, maybe I'll get an idea of of what 
Edward thinking if I do some pressing, because I'm kind of not sure. Uh, also, they both knew that fact. Do you think they knew? Yeah, I don't think only the victim knew. I think the girl realized it as well. They both knew who the other person was, but they had to pretend that they didn't. Because he was on the lam. You got it. The victim couldn't exactly go around flaunting who he was. Furthermore... One as a butler, and one as the friend of the sun, you mean? They probably thought that was their best shot. Is that what you honestly believe? Ah, I think this is where we're going. Of course. Ah, uh, hold on. Whole Amano thing. Um... I think in the dossier... Where is it? Where is it? Shoot. No, maybe I have to press to get the information that I need. Still, because there's something I remember, but I think... I think it hasn't been revealed yet? No. You mean how they plotted to commit this crime as blood relatives? Can you think of a better partner? They're certainly a clever pair. The butler and the girlfriend. No one would ever suspect that they were, in fact, family. Yes, from the very beginning, they painstakingly practiced those roles well. Oh, okay. Okay, hold on. I think maybe it's this one, because we know for a fact that there was a, a third kidnapper. There. There we go. I, I, ugh, okay. I think my brain was jumping ahead. <laughs> Sorry. This kidnapping wasn't planned by just two people alone. And what kind of proof do you have of that? Quite simply, there were three kidnappers. Three? Four costumes were stolen from the Wild Wild West area's backroom. We found one of them in the kidnapper's hideout. But as for the other three, we can assume they were being worn by three different people. We also found a set of three cups and three folding chairs that were used in the hideout. It all clearly points to a three-man group. And I believe this third person is the real mastermind behind the kidnapping. Who? Who is this mastermind? Oh, you're sweating, Lang. I present to you the brains behind the kidnapping. Now, you gotta think, there was some shady stuff going on. Like, come on now, y'all. The fact that she would even dare to kidnap her beloved Lance, the fact he miraculously escaped and never mentioned the third kidnapper. Mm-hmm. Getting some Trials and Tribulations vibes here. Lance Amano? What is he, Dahlia Hawthorne? Yes, his abduction was, in fact, schemed up by Lance himself. Recall what he said when he appeared before us. Did you see the faces of your kidnappers? No. I didn't see the faces, but two, one 
one was a woman. However, there were three kidnappers, which is in direct contradiction to what he said. But, but, I know I only saw two people. This guy was being held hostage. It's possible he couldn't see all three of them. Oh yes, that when you were being held. I have my doubts about what happened then. Lance, would you mind telling us what happened while you were being held captive? I really don't remember much anymore. Honest. But if I don't tell you at least something, you won't believe me at all, will you? Alright, stupid primpy boy. Ugh. I was kidnapped yesterday morning. They had me shut in that room blindfolded the entire time. But the kidnapper suddenly disappeared around the time I heard rain falling outside. My hands were cuffed, but it was a stroke of luck that they left me alone. I made my escape and ran away from that room as fast as I could. Why has nobody removed the handcuffs, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> they were like, all right, sir, let's just get these off you. He's like, no, I like them. Please keep them on. It's like, okay then, somebody's kinky. <laughs> Through the underground passageway, I presume. Are you okay? Why are you hiding behind me? Sorry, I really didn't want to recall that horrible ordeal, but... But now you believe me, right? No, not quite yet. You're shady as hell. Ugh! How can you not? Why do you look at me with icy daggers in your eyes? Because he's a prosecutor, and because they're all like that. I'll have you know, Agent Lang, a prosecutor's eyes are for discerning the truth. And should they be interpreted to be cruel at times, then so be it. Ah, oh, that's such a hot, dominant answer. I love it, Edgeworth. <laughs> and Lang's like, damn it, I can't beat him. <laughs> There's a sticking point in Lance's testimony. Let's see what he offers up when I push a little. Alright, time to do some pressing. Push it real good. Can you tell us about when you were abducted in a little more detail? It was a strange morning. I felt like I was right in the middle of a great calm. And where were you when you experienced this calm? Our family garden, of course. Where else could it have been? Well, excuse me for asking. This child is more princess than prince. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, Lauren, come on, girl, you could do so much better. I was out taking a walk to shake off the morning blah. Then, out of the blue, someone from behind clamps a hand over my mouth. You didn't see your attacker. They must have used some drug to knock me out. Because before I knew it, I was off in La La Land again. I woke up. I was in the kidnapper's hideout already, all tied up. Okay, how do shut in the room? By that room, you mean the room in the kidnapper's hideout, correct? Yes, but I was blindfolded the whole time, so I didn't know that until I made my escape. Then you were in the same room as your kidnappers. They spoke in hushed tones, but I could catch bits of their conversation. It was definitely two people, and one of them was definitely a woman. I was so scared, I could tell they were nearby, so I didn't dare make a move. And that person disappeared, a rain falling outside. Hmm. The kidnappers disappeared. The room fell into a sudden silence, 
I had been left behind like an unwanted mutt. And what do you mean by unwanted mutt? <laughs> and George, really? What a pointless question. It's not like he's going to tell you anything new, you know? It's a poetic simile. You should learn how to use them, too. You may look refined on the outside. What the? <laughs> what was that dramatic moment? He like moved and his hair moved and it's like he was posing and the wind was blowing. Ew, no, stop. But it's no good if you're not refined on the inside as well. Ew. I, I wish she had reacted and been like, ugh. <laughs> Alright, his hands were cuffed. And still are. <laughs> then there's cuffs on your wrists. I suppose you are still cuffed in that case. I'm well aware of how I am chained to reality. I couldn't find the key, so I'm afraid that I'm stuck like this. No, I'm pretty sure the cops would have been able to get them off you, you know. Seriously. I just, I have a feeling that you said, oh, let's keep them on, please. <laughs> Even though I escaped from that jail cell, I will forever be a prisoner. Okay. Escape. Hold it. How did you manage to escape? I wanted to just get out of there, but the door leading outside was locked. Ah. Which is why I had to use the underground passageway to make my escape. I remember our escape took equally as hard. This is an invaluable piece of testimony. I must let it go unexamined. The door leading outside was locked tight, so I had to use the underground passageway. Are you sure about that? Hehe. <laughs> Objection! You say that the door leading out was locked. But was it really? Uh, they came off your wrist. Hmm, you phony man. I could tell your wrist could just slip right out of that. <laughs> That's not even really on you the right way. Probably fake handcuffs. Like, did nobody else notice the fact that they came off? Like, come on now. <laughs> We're talking about that room behind the saloon front, right? Look, I heard that it took quite a few men to get that thing open. Right, Sheena? Yes, that's correct. Then take a look at- Oh, whoa! Lang, stop! Edgeworth is the one doing it right now. <laughs> then take a look at this. What is that, a sword? It's not an especially reliable one if it's broken like that. Allow me to start from the end. My conclusion is that the door was never locked. It was simply held shut by this sword, which was used to jam the handle. Ugh. Lance, even though your hands were cuffed together, you could still use them. If that's the case, then why did you not just simply remove the sword and escape? Why didn't I? I was disoriented. Yes, that's it. I didn't notice it. As if I should accept such a bold-faced lie. You locked yourself in that room because you had to make yourself look like the victim. But you did not in fact possess the key to the door. That is why you used the prop sword to improvise and create a prison of your... Oh, of your very own. I don't know why I read that weird. You've been making this guy out to be one of the kidnappers for some time now. I wonder if you've forgotten something very important along the way. And what would that be? A motive. What else? It's the thing we always ask for at the last minute. <laughs> oh. But actually, you guys, I'm gonna end this episode right here. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're enjoying this, and until next time, have a nice day.